Caddis Maximus here, this time with the Performance Tool Mini Pen Heat Gun here. This is a little uh, 2 amp hour lithium ion. I assume there's an 18650 in here. I think it's kind of an interesting idea. Although when you're using a single 3.6 volt 18650, uh, not a lot of output. And the size of this uh, output is super tiny. But I thought, well, it is convenient in many situations, particularly as shrink wrap or with people who are in situations you know, maybe doing uh, electronics repair where there may be hot glue involved. This will help soften the hot glue. But it's such a small, tiny stream. And really, the heat doesn't shoot out particularly far because it has a pretty weak fan in it. But that's kind of the advantage of it is it is a small, controlled uh, heat gun. So you can apply quite a bit of heat in a really tiny area, kind of like a uh, electronic surface mount desoldering tool hot air desoldering tool and it almost seems like that what this is kind of a rebrand of is a uh, handheld uh, uh, pot tool comes in a little package usb cable they talk about all this stuff uh two amp uh, lithium ion battery needs a 2.1 amp uh, output charger although i thought was curious is on the uh, manual here one amp Charging current, 1 amp. So why they're insisting on a 2 amp, two amp I'm not, not entirely sure. Anyway, the whole reason I picked it up, it does use micro USB. The reason that manufacturers continue to use micro USB is because you... Even though like USB-C is great, it's just another standard. There are just so many cable connection standards as people just don't ever want to cooperate and actually settle on something. So uh, most of the world still uses micro USB and manufacturers are stuck with, oh, okay, we can use more modern USB-C, but not a lot of people have USB-C cables. Quite frankly, unless you have like a really modern cell phone, most people won't have any USB-C cables. So they make the choice of micro USB because it's just simply more accessible. And it really sucks. And you almost can guarantee that at some point USB-C isn't going to be sufficient. There'll be yet another standard after that. It's just crazy how many different ports there are. It does have a safety feature. So you don't just immediately uh, hit the button and it turns on. You actually have to press it and hold for three seconds. And then you get a little blue LED and, and you can hear the fan running. Then it shows you the power level. It's annoying that you can't just tap the power button to see what your battery level is. And then what it allows you to do is turn on the heat and then quickly turn off the heat. That way it's more or less ready to go, but it's not always running. Now, when you, you can hear it, I'd say right about here. Actually, that's not really too bad in a still air environment like I am in. Maybe six inches away, uh, you can feel it. And then if you press and hold, it'll turn it back off. So pretty simple. It's a stick on power button here. So I don't know how well that's going to hold up. I will take a quick look inside. But for 20 bucks, I actually think this is a tool that will be relatively useful for me just because it is a mini heat gun. And I think some, you know, various uh, technicians and just people who work on maybe certain arts and crafts and hobbies, this would be great for heating up plastics that you're trying to bend and mold or to get to conform to a certain shape to maybe people who take apart cell phones just because it gets more than hot enough, but it allow you to go around the edge of the glass screen because now um, people just use a big heat gun, heat up the entire back of the cell phone until it's almost too hot to touch and then use their metal tools to cut the back glass off. With something like this, it's actually a fine enough jet of heat that's coming out that you could actually go around the edge of the screen or the, the back glass, excuse me, and actually really apply a lot of heat right to where the glue is and actually reducing the amount of heat that you're putting over the center of, of the phone, over the battery, etc. So it could be handy for something like that. They're only advertising 15 minutes of runtime. Part of the problem with that is, of course, the two amp hour battery when there's three amp hour 18650. So I'm going to see if it's like some soldered one where you'd have to order one that has terminals most likely you you will but knowing that it only has a two amp battery means that one that they should have just put in a bigger battery and charged you know 25 bucks for it um but also that you can upgrade it yourself so anyway let's just do a couple little tests here like i said for me it's going to be shrink tubing so i don't have to use lighters to shrink my shrimp shrink tubing anymore 
We'll see how it goes here. At least it actually puts out a decent amount of heat. Get a little closer here. Uh, yeah, it's working okay, but it's not... For some reason, it's just such a tiny jet of air. I always have to sneeze. Well, even though it feels hot, it's just such a tiny amount of air. It's just not doing particularly well on this piece of uh, shrink tubing here. I'm really close to it. It says it gets up to 600 degrees. It feels like it gets plenty hot. It just isn't putting out enough BTUs. There's a difference between how hot something can get and just the total amount of heat output. This is starting to, to come together here, but not very effectively. I'm really close to this thing. There we go. Now it's finally working, but I have to be like right on top of this piece of shrink tubing in order to get it to finally shrink. So this will work for shrink tubing just uh, because it is a fine jet of air, but it's just not enough BTUs. This is one of those situations where it really could be uh, a little higher output. Like really this thing should have been compact but had a 7.2 volt battery. I mean, I'm still working on this, and it's it's not uh, cooperating as well as I'd like it to. Let me show the difference. We have that piece of shrink tubing I was working on. Let's just finish it off with a lighter. If you use the blue part of the lighter on shrink tubing, then you don't get any black marks. The thing about the flame is it just applies a lot of heat real evenly. You can see how well I managed to uh, get that shrunk on in just about no time with the lighter. So this thing uh, is neat. It's just a, a little bit weak. Let's do that again. Here's another screw. And the screw was absorbing a little bit of heat, but it should have shrunk it fast. This is how quick it normally is with uh, just using a lighter. Let's get it on there and just start shrinking it up like that. On the other side, sh shrink it up like so. And boom, we're done. So that's how easy it is with a lighter and why I still continue to use lighters for shrinking shrink tubing if this stupid camera would focus. So that's really the deal with it. It is kind of neat. Uh, I do generally like uh, the idea of the tool and it will come in handy, you know, in occasional electronic situations, once again, like for heating up surface mount components and uh, for work with hot glues and maybe really tiny shrink tubing, but it's just such a tiny hole, so hard you have to get right next to the shrink tubing and it just doesn't apply the heat quite as evenly as, say, using a lighter. The lighter was surprisingly effective for heat shrink tubing uh, versus using this. But let's take a look inside. Here we go. I think the biggest issue really is that there just isn't strong enough a fan. It feels like the heater is actually putting out enough, BT, enough BTUs, to tell you the truth. It's just uh, not enough airflow. Come on now. Let's get this. Well, got it apart. It's disappointing in here. They're using a no-name 18650. It does indeed have tabs that are soldered to the ends of the battery, so you'd have to order a special battery to upgrade it, but it would be just as simple as desoldering this one and putting on a new one. We do have a couple outputs here, one for the fan, and this is a tiny little micro motor, uh, like, like using those little pocket drones that they sell, you know, on, for $20 at the store. Ceramic heating element. There is a Zener diode here. I don't know if they use that to limit the power that's going to this or what exactly it's doing or if it's a safety thing. I don't I don't understand electronics a super ton. Um, but they have this little motor. It's in a little tapered housing. So if we turn this thing on, there's a tiny little motor blowing a tiny amount of air. So I kind of understand what's going on with why it doesn't work so well is the fact that what it's doing is this tiny little fan is sucking in air and then trying to blow it through the center of this heating element through those little holes that the also the heater wires go through. And so there's all of its airflow is stuck going through those little tiny holes. So it just has hardly any airflow. That is a ceramic element up there for the heat resistance. 
so really they could have made this a little bit higher flowing of a head. So pretty simple design. This has a circuit board, which takes control of both charging as well as the electronic power button. I do know like this big chip up here is like the main power chip that's turning on and off the uh, heater there. And you can see how it kind of heat sinks through the circuit board. And then some vents on each side so the fan can uh, pull in some air. So that's just a bushing motor fan. Who knows exactly how long it will last, but not much to it. So there you have it. Bright green, easy to see. Too bad it just could use a lot, uh, actually surprisingly enough, a bit more output. Seeing how much effort it took just to try to uh, shrink some shrink tubing effectively. It doesn't even hold a candle to uh, what would literally be one candle worth of flame coming out of a lighter to shrink the shrink tubing. But it doesn't mean it's useless. I certainly could see it for preheating all sorts of electronic uses as well as hot uh, craft and hobby and that type of thing but for me it really using it for something like shrink tubing uh, is the fact that with a lighter part of the thing with electronics and heat is you want to apply enough heat to get the job done in a relatively quick amount of time the problem with having too little heat like using too small of a soldering iron or too weak of a soldering iron on too big of a component like relays is that you're letting it sit on there for a way too long a period of time and all the components end up getting way too hot rather than basically flash heating applying a bunch of heat into a real specific area for just a few seconds and then pulling it away doesn't give a chance for the other components or objects around the heat soak this if you had a big bundle of wires you're fixing one then trying to use it to shrink tube the wire that you fixed you're going to end up applying just tons of heat to all the other wires around it because you have to let it sit there for so long. And those are some tiny pieces of shrink tube, enough to go around a screw, not big thick ones or ones that have, you know, adhesive inside them or anything like that. Although I did notice something that I you basically don't see. And uh, just as I finished this out, I was about to uh, take a look at the package. It says lifetime warranty on there. That's a lifetime warranty on an electrical item that has a lithium-ion battery. Interesting. That's a little surprising to me. It's not just like confidence in the electronics. It you know that is telling a little bit. One, it's a pretty big selling point when you're offering a cordless heat gun that you're with a lifetime warranty. They're saying. That when the battery fails, they'll replace it when the battery fails, or if anything else fails, for as long as you own the device. Which also says that they probably, it was only costing them, you know, this is probably something you could find on AliExpress for five bucks. They're charging you 20 or I'm sure 25 in some stores, and they're giving you a lifetime warranty. I'm sure they won't have these for decades down the road, so they'll end up just giving you a rebate check or something like that if it actually fails. But it is worth mentioning. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.